And privacy-free garbling schemes essentially aim to achieve only authenticity with increased efficiency. And they do this by sacrificing privacy. Applications of privacy-free garbling include zero knowledge, attribute-based key exchange, and anonymous credentials, among others. And our main result in this work is an information theoretic privacy-free garbling scheme for formulas. Right. Um, some interesting properties of our construction looking ahead. Uh, it leaks both keys on some wires, some intermediate wires in the circuit, and this has no effect on the security of the construction. Right. And there are no cryptographic assumptions with information theoretic, and it produces no ciphertext either. And interestingly, it's linear in the linear garbling model of uh, Zahur and others from the Eurocrypt 15 work, and it overcomes the lower bound that they proved in the privacy-free setting. Right? And our construction composes to, gar to garble formulas, and the intuition is that even though we leak some keys on intermediate wires, um, a key can be leaked on a wire only if a gate occurring after it topologically has already been evaluated, and by definition, the output gate is last topologically. And uh, unlike information theoretic constructions in the general setting that achieve privacy, our construction doesn't have a key size that's dependent on the depth of the circuit. And, and also, we score adaptive security in the language of Bellari and others for free, as we don't produce any ciphertext. The construction produces no ciphertext. Right? And we introduce uh, efficient threshold gate gobbling in the privacy free setting. Okay, some background. A garbling scheme consists of a tuple of algorithms, garble, encode, evaluate, and decode. The garble algorithm takes the circuit description and the security parameter and outputs a garble circuit, encoding information, and decoding information. The encoding information is combined with the clear input to give a garbled input, which can then be evaluated on a garbled circuit to produce a garbled output. The garbled output is then decoded to a clear output and a natural Correctness requirement is that the clear output obtained at the end of this procedure is the same as what we would have gotten if we had evaluated in the clear. Right, so privacy informally captures that the information available to an evaluator leaks nothing about the input that was used to generate it. So this is formalized by requiring the existence of a simulator that produces the same values as the garbled circuit, uh, encoded input, and decoding information without access to the actual cleared input. Right? So it's computationally indistinguishable from honestly generated values. Authenticity captures the unforgeability of garbled outputs. That is, if I mean, taking a look at the garbling scheme of flowchart again, if we replace the evaluation box with an adversary who outputs some white tilde, uh, an authentic garbling scheme ensures that any output of an adversary in this case is always the output of honest evaluation. And an adversary can't output, or rather forge, an output that's also valid and also not the output of honest evaluation. Right, so privacy-free gobbling. Uh, Fredrickson and others ask if we can gain efficiency by sacrificing privacy so that a gobbling scheme can achieve authenticity more efficiently. And they find that we can, up to 50% better in concrete costs. And the state of the art, that's the construction by Zahur and others, requires only one ciphertext per AND gate and is optimal in the linear garbling model for privacy free. And also, the current state of the art for general purpose garbling, that's half gates, is built on top of a privacy free garbling scheme. So that's additional motivation to study the privacy free setting. So, our approach. Um, this is the general. This is the view of an evaluator and a constructor in a general gate gobbling, gate gobbling gadget. So uh, the notation is as follows: uh, a gate has okay, a gate has two incoming wires, uh, left and right, and an output wire. The left wire has keys L0, L1, corresponding to semantic values 0 and 1, right. The right incoming wire has R0, R1 corresponding to 0 and 1, and the gate itself has output keys, K0, K1. And there are four ciphertexts, each of which use a unique combination of input keys to encrypt the output. And the evaluator's view uh, during evaluation is essentially one key on each of the input wires, and this allows them to decrypt any one of the ciphertexts, I mean, any, any 
one cipher text that correct, contains the correct output key. And so taking a closer look at the evaluator's view, the general intuition, or rather the intuition in the general setting, is that all the information available to an evaluator, that is uh, one key each on the left and right wires, should be sufficient to compute only the correct output key and nothing else. So this also implicitly captures that the semantics of the keys that the evaluator has are preserved, I mean, are kept private. Um, in the privacy-free setting, we can spe specify that uh, the nothing else is specifically nothing else useful in forging the opposite key. That is, we aren't concerned about protecting the semantics of the keys that the evaluator has. In fact, we use this to our advantage. Right, so this, in a nutshell, is our call construction for gobbling an AND gate in the privacy-free setting. Um, so all the zero keys are the same. That is, ah, that is. Um, L0, R0, and K0 are um, essentially the same value, and we maintain that uh, K1 is an additive secret sharing, I mean, it's additively secret shared to produce the input one keys, L1 and R1, right? So evaluation is quite straightforward. As an evaluator who has a zero key can directly copy that and set it as his output key. And uh, an evaluator who has only one key is XORs them in order to get the output key. Right, so uh, an interesting thing to, an interesting aspect of this construction is consider the case where an evaluator has keys, let's say, uh, sorry, L0 and R1, right? Since L0 is the same as R0 is the same as K0, he now has both keys on the right wire as L0 is the same as R0. So this could pose a problem in the general setting where he has two keys on the right wire and one key on the left wire. So multiple evaluations in the general setting are a problem as um, they could possibly leak the semantics of uh, the keys that the evaluator has. But in the privacy-free setting, it doesn't matter because, like I said, semantics are not, semantics of the keys are not something that we're concerned with protecting. So can we make multiple evaluations redundant? What do I mean by this? If you consider an AND gate, if one of the inputs is zero, it doesn't matter what the other input is, as the output is always going to be zero. So specifically, if the evaluator has uh, the left zero key, that's L0, uh, whatever value he has on the other wire doesn't matter, as evaluating L0 with R0 is the same as evaluating L0 with R1, and this provides the output key K0. So the takeaway is that if the evaluator has L0, then we can leak both R0 as well as R1. And equivalently, we can leak L0 and L1 when the evaluator has R0. And the security analysis shows that this property is taken advantage of by our scheme. So if, if an evaluator is given L0, by definition, he's missing L1. So despite the fact that he's able to derive both right keys, uh, K1, which is the opposite output key, stays perfectly hidden. And equivalently, if he's given R0, it doesn't matter what he has on the left wire. Even if he has both left keys, he's missing R1, and K1 is perfectly hidden. And if he has both L1 as well as R1, he's missing both L0 and R0, so K0 is perfectly hidden. Right, so uh, composition is an issue because we leak keys on certain input wires. So it's something we have to consider carefully. So first of all, um, XOR is the same as free XOR, or very similar to free XOR. Um, so one of the effects of, re of leaking the input keys is that we can't reuse the wire keys across different gates. So what this means is that multi-fan out gates are a problem for our construction. So we can direct, however, we can prove that this construction composes to gobble formulas directly, that is, circuits where all gates are a fan out one. This is because intuitively the keys only leak towards the input wires, the keys don't leak towards the outputs. So only if you've evaluated a gate already can you derive keys on wires before it. Right, so let's take a look at threshold gates, which are another class of gates that we consider. A threshold gate essentially has n inputs and a threshold t. Um, the threshold gate outputs one if more than t of the inputs are one and outputs zero otherwise. Right, it's generally interesting to consider to gobble natively as TC0 is in a separate complexity class. But why is it interesting in the privacy-free setting? As they allow us to express some statements more naturally in 
um, some of that application. So in zero knowledge, for instance, this means that we can prove statements of the form, I have witnesses for at least t out of these n statements without revealing exactly which statements or even how many statements. And in the case of attribute-based key exchange, we can implement policies of the form, user attributes must satisfy at least t out of these n policies more naturally without revealing exactly which or how many policies. Right, so they were first considered to be gobbled natively by Wall and others in the CCF 16 work. Right, so let's take a look at the construction, the intuition. So the terminology is as follows. If there are n input wires, the ith wire has keys k0, k1 corresponding to semantic 0 and 1 on, on it, and the output keys are k0, k1. Right, so it's quite simple, really. The, the one key, the k1, is t out of n shared in order to produce the input one keys. So the ki ones comprise the t out of n shared sharing of k1. And we also require that the zero key not be accessible unless the evaluator doesn't, is under the threshold of the ones that he requires. So the ki zeros comprise an n minus t plus one out of n sharing of k0. Now why do we do this? Let's consider a concrete example where we have n inputs and the threshold is three, sorry, nine inputs and the threshold is three. So the ki ones comprise a three out of nine sharing of k1 and the ki zeros comprise a five out of nine sharing of k0. So for argument's sake, consider the case where an evaluator has f four or more ki ones, right? So this enables him to reconstruct k1 quite easily but this also directly implies that he has five or fewer shares of K0, and as K0 is five out of nine shared, this means that it's completely inaccessible to the evaluator, and this captures authenticity. Equivalently, if he has six or more shares of K0, he, that means that he has three or fewer shares of K1, which renders K1 completely inaccessible when he's able to reconstruct K0. And so the properties of this construction are somewhat similar to the AND gate gobbling that I described earlier. Uh, that is, it, you can clearly see that both keys on many wires are leaked after evaluation, as once you reconstructed the curve, you essentially have all the keys um, for the correct input. And this construction produces no ciphertext either and is information theoretic, and achieves adaptive security for this reason. Also, we can show that this composes the gobble threshold gates in, that are embedded in formulas. And this can be embedded in circuits, assuming fairly minimal symmetric key assumptions, and uh, choosing curves for the Shamir sharing that's required pseudo-randomly um, kind of enables a gobble row reduction that lets us gobble uh, threshold gates that are embedded in Boolean circuits with only n plus one ciphertext. Okay, some including remarks. Uh, so generally, what do we do here? We have a better understanding of privacy-free gobbling now uh, with our AND and threshold gate gobbling schemes. Um, and also the fact that um, our gobbling scheme uses only linear operations as it's information theoretic and uh, doesn't have a blow up in key size. And despite this, it fits into it fits quite well into the model of Zahur and others and still overcomes their one ciphertext lower bound for the privacy-free setting. Uh, we discussed this in more detail in the paper. Um, we, have, we now have efficient privacy-free threshold gate cobbling for threshold gates and Boolean circuits. And we have more extensions of this scheme and a more detailed discussion on the lower bound in our paper, which I encourage you to read. Um, some open problems that directly follow from this work uh, can we build on the privacy-free construction for improved gobbling in other settings? So for instance, privacy-free gobbling for circuits, somehow inspired by this scheme, or perhaps improved gobbling for formulas in the privacy, in the private setting. Right? And based on how we got around the bound in the privacy-free setting, um, any lessons to challenge the lower bound for the general setting for gobbling schemes? It would be interesting to see if we could derive from this work. Okay, and that's it for the talk. Thank you.